Hey everybody and welcome back to the Creative Collector. So in today's video, I show you how I paint up the Craven's Last Hunt. This is the cover of Web of Spider-Man number 32, the iconic cover drawn by Mike Zek. So this was a commission for the month of August for my Patreon, and this was designed by FP Artworks. So this is an all resin print, printed in quarter scale, and I use mainly the Uniformation GK2, and on a couple of the base parts, because they're so big, I use the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. And without getting too much into it, let's go ahead and get into the build right now. All right, so here's the model all glued together. The next thing I gotta do is I got a couple of seams here from the base, and then I got a couple of small gaps here on the uh, different pieces of it. And on Spidey here, I got some gaps I gotta fill right here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this DAP plastic wood filler here to fill those gaps. Let's get to it. So this stuff is so easy to use. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take and glop a, a little bit of it right in here. And the, the gap and the seams or whatever, I'm not too worried about being a gloop or whatever like that. So I'm gonna take a little bit like this. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of it and kind of dap it, spread it around a little bit. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back behind it with a brush, I'm gonna wet the brush a little bit. I'm actually gonna kind of thin this out a little bit, with the brush. And it thins it into this gap. But this is so much better than putting a big loop in there and having to wait for it to dry and then sand it down. It's hard to get into that detail. So this stuff spreads really, really thin, or really easy with water. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, much easier to work with in my opinion. So I'm gonna do this in the gaps in the body and then I'll go onto the base and onto the tombstone and fill those in and we'll be ready for primer. So now I've got everything patched up, all puttied up here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to primer it. And a lot of people have been asking me about the primer that I use and this is what I use right here, Krylon Color Max Primer. This stuff goes on really smooth, uh, not a lot of sanding needed, gets really good coverage. And I've been using this for a couple of years now. And here we have it all primed up, ready to go. Everything is covered, looks pretty good. Now it's time to slap some paint on it. So now we got everything primed up. The first thing I'm gonna do is start on the paint with this tombstone. And for that, I'm gonna be using the Pro Acryl Bright Neutral Gray here. Uh, this is a new paint for me and so far I really like them and I'm thinking that's probably what we're going to be painting this whole entire piece with. So let's get to airbrushing this. Okay, so now we're going to continue working our base colors. We're going to do the base now and for that I'm going to use this warm brown right here from Pro Acryl. And right now what we're trying to do is we're gonna get our base colors down first before we do any detailing. So we're gonna start with this one next. So for the Spider-Man figure, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the white down on the eyes and up here on the spider itself. I'm airbrushing this first and I'm going to hand paint everything else because I want this white to go on really smoothly and really bold. I really want it to stand out. And so for the white that I'm going to be using is this heavy titanium white. Like I said, I really want it bold and stand out. And then we're going to hand paint the rest of it here. So let's go. Okay, so now we're gonna continue laying out the base colors by hand painting the black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this coal black here from Pro Acryl, and I'm going to go in and do a lot of lining out first. I'm gonna map out everything that's gonna be painted black and not painted 
the mud color on here and go ahead and fill in the end seams right here on the webbing. So uh, this was what's next. And this is why it sucks to do this on camera because look at that. I already boo-booed by going into the white right there. That's no problem. We'll fix it as we go. So now that we have all the black and white on here, I'll do some more touch up on the white here in a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the brown on here for the mud. And I'm basically just gonna sit it down in here uh, to use for the meantime as a placeholder. And I'm gonna go through with that warm brown and just go ahead and block everything out. Okay, so basically we've got all of the colors blocked out on the Spider-Man, the base, and the tombstone. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a dark gray wash on the tombstone. I'm gonna give it a little bit of depth, and then we're gonna do some dry brushing on it to bring some of that detail out. And the next thing I'm going to do is use a black wash on the mud here. That way it gets down into the crevices and everything. Uh, you can really see some of this detail come out. And then once it's dry, we're going to do some dry brushing over the top of this to really make it pop. So the one thing you want to be careful with when you're doing this is I have some white on here on the figure itself where the spider is on the chest and everything. You want to make sure that you apply this wash in a very thin layer. It doesn't have to be dripping all off and everything because you don't want it to run into the white. When you do that, you're going to have all kinds of issues. You're going to have to go back and repaint it and everything. So just be mindful of that. When you have an area with a light color that you don't want wash on it, apply it in a thin layer. Now you know. All right, and now we're going to do the wash on the base, which is the same thing. It's a black wash. So the next thing I'm going to do with this grass here is I'm going to use a little bit of this green uh, right here and then I'm going to go ahead and airbrush a little bit of it in there and I might kind of dab a little bit to kind of get some uh, different colors in there besides just the green uh, maybe a little bit of the brown as well I might go ahead and dry brush some of the tips of the grass with a little bit of a lighter green as well Okay, so now I got the grass on here and for me, it's a little too green. So I'm gonna go back in and re-put some of this mud, some of the brown back in it, touch it up a little bit, kind of like in places. And then what I'll do is um, I'll reassess it, but I'll probably go back in with a little bit of lighter green and maybe mix in some yellow in with it and kind of do some of the tips right here to kind of make it stand out a little bit. That way it looks a little bit more like grass rather than just like artificial turf. So now that I put some of that brown back in, 
looks a little better. So I'm going to use this bright yellow green right here to go in and do some of the tipping on some of the grass here. I am going to put a wash on here, but it's going to be a brown wash. That way it kind of goes into the cracks and crevices and stuff. And uh, that way it stands out a little bit better and it doesn't look like it's just uh, still artificial turf. <laughs> All right, so now that we got that out of the way, it's time to start doing some weathering here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like an example like I did up here. I'm gonna take the same light gray that I used and I'm just gonna go in a downward motion. That way it kind of looks like it's eroding a little bit over that. And we're gonna bring some of this texture back out and focus in on some of the high points and stuff and make them just pop a little bit. All right, so if you want to, you can use a brown wash uh, to add some erosion to it. Like the letters here, you kind of want to make it maybe like they're kind of uh, dried off a little bit, kind of like they're got a little bit of erosion underneath. A little water's kind of seeping down onto the tombstone here. But you can do this, add a little bit of brown in here and you'll see how it really makes it just kind of stand out. Probably can't. And so for the next thing, I'm gonna use some of these pan pastels right here to actually go and do a little bit of depth into the letters here and a little bit of shading around here and in some of the areas here to make it look a little bit more weathered than what it is. And now for the base, I'm going to use this light umber to go ahead and dry brush over the top of it. And for Spider-Man here, we're going to give him the same treatment with just basically on top of most of this. And for the final part on the base, I'll go in and use a little bit of black on the airbrush and some of the larger cracks and crevices and give it some definition and make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, so we got everything glued in place. We got all of the washes done, all the details and everything like that. But there's one thing missing on the cover of this web of Spider-Man number 32, there was actually like rain coming down. Well, while we can't simulate the rain, it did have puddles. So there are little pits here and everything on the base that uh, I'm gonna put some puddles on and I'm gonna use this still water here from AK Interactive. This stuff is supposed to go on in like thin layers and all you do is just apply it on there and it dries. So we're going to try it out, see how it works, see what kind of nice effect it gives. And uh, got some uh, glamour shots coming up here in just a second.
Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got something out of this. As you can see, this model is rather large and uh, happy to put it up on my shelf as part of my collection. And don't forget, my collection room is still underway and I'll have some videos up for you very soon. And as always, I want to give a huge shout out to FP Artworks for the design and also my Patreon members. And boy, it's been a month and we've got a lot of new members. Let's see who we got. Philippe Silva, Paulino Crespo, Joe Young, and I might have already said some of these, but we have a lot. Sean Van S, Paul Knight, Woody Warren, Nathan Haviland, Keegan Duck, Mike Chapman, Ivan, just Ivan, Corey Wright, Ralph Gethings, Laura Grieve, Justin Santiago, Coffee Coffster, Sal, Ron Hughes, Iran Romaldo, Chris Marsh, Preston Grove, JLabs 3D Studio, Mark Hacker, Cryopanic, Bruno Miguel, Chaz Babylon, Ibrahim Kaziki, Jose Diaz, Stephen Bateman, Alex Clemens, Elson Ahumada, Kyan1723, and Eric Ellison. Whew. That was a lot of people. Thank you guys so much for becoming a member of the Patreon. And if you want to support the channel, just simply watch the videos. But if you want to do the extra, go to my Patreon, sign up right now for our model of the month. We have not one, but two models coming up for September. So check it out. If you're part of the $10 tier, then you get the models for the month of September. See you over there. And as usual, thank you to everyone who watches the video. By doing that, you do support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So, you know the drill. Until the next video, everybody stay safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And we'll see you. I don't know how many of you caught this, but <laughs> there's Craven lurking in the background with a shotgun. Ooh, that's pretty brutal.